Hello, and welcome to our more in-depth tutorial and site tour for the new National Weather Service radar website. I'm Micah Holm. And I'm Francis Credencer, and we're excited to dive into the details of this completely revamped and modernized site. You might be used to seeing this page when going to weather.gov radar. But now when you're going to the National Radar site at radar.weather.gov, you will land on this page. You will instantly notice that the default view is a full screen map with a national mosaic of all active radar sites, and it is much easier to view than the old site with the smaller inset map. This map will also display any active severe thunderstorm, tornado, and flash flood warnings. On a computer, you can left click and drag to move the map around, and use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Alternatively, Using the plus and minus buttons on the lower left corner of the screen will zoom in and out. If you are on a mobile device, you can move the map by simply holding your finger on the screen and moving where you want to go. You can zoom in by double tapping and zoom out by pinching two fingers together on the screen. You can set the radar into motion by clicking or tapping the play button on the lower left corner of the screen and stop the radar by clicking the same button. The top left corner of the page has a bunch of display options that we will spend the bulk of our time talking about in this tour. Clicking on the three horizontal lines will bring up general map display options. The top button will hide the menu, but it can be quickly brought back into full view by clicking the button with three horizontal lines again. The reset map button takes you back to the original default view. Below that, you can change the base map if you would like to have a different background. Finally, there are some options to turn on various border overlays. Clicking the location button will turn it into a search bar where you can type in a location and top search results will show below that. Once you have selected a location, it will show up in the recent searches section and if you click or tap on the star, it will make it one of your favorite locations that will show up at any time you are in the location search menu. You can click the use my location option to use your device's current location. Once you have selected a specific location, the weather for that location will show in the form of the current temperature and an icon representing current conditions. Clicking the icon opens a drop down that will show a graph of the temperature and a text forecast for the next several days. You can click the link at the top to go to the home page of the local NWS forecast office for local weather information. If there are active alerts for the location, you can click the alert button to see what alerts are in effect. Clicking the link will bring up some more information and if you click the details link, it will take you to a page with the full text of the weather alert. The final but most involved stop on our tour is the Select View menu. Here you will find the options for changing the radar and alert data you view. Let's start with the Radar Station Products option. Clicking on that will put circles on the map representing each radar site around the country. This is similar to the old National Radar Sites map in the past, but with a key upgrade. The old site only showed static blue dots, but the new site has the circles color-coded to represent radar status. Blue means the radar site seems to be operating normally, yellow indicates that there may be data issues, and red indicates a site is not transmitting data. Clicking a dot will center the map on that radar and show data from only that site. You can zoom in for a better look. There are new drop-down menu options when you go to a specific radar site. The leftmost menu 
will have the four letter identifier of the radar site. And the drop down menu will display the data latency, which indicates how recently it was updated. The next menu shows an abbreviated name of the radar product currently displayed. Clicking that menu will show the radar products available for that site. General radar users might be most interested in base reflectivity, which shows areas of precipitation, as well as options such as precipitation type and the one hour and storm total precipitation totals. More advanced users may be interested in viewing the other options. If you are viewing the most recent radar data, the third drop-down menu will show if there are any alerts in effect for the area of the map currently visible. Clicking on this menu will show specifically what alerts are in effect. If you are not on the most recent frame, there will be a link you can click to take you to the current data view. Once you do this, then the current alerts will show up, both at the menu header and in the menu itself. You can further click on the individual alerts, as before, for more information. This will default to storm-based warnings, such as severe thunderstorm and tornado warnings, but there is an option in the next menu to turn on all alerts in the single site radar view mode. If you click the three vertical dots, that will bring you to some data and display options. The first will be a link to download GIS data for that site. Details on that are covered in another tutorial. The station type option will allow you to toggle which radar sites appear as dots on the map. The default is WSR88D, which are standard Doppler weather radars. You can select the TDWR option, which are shorter range radars located near many major airports. Below that, you will find radar overlay options to show all alerts or just storm-based warnings, toggle radar transparency on or off, and toggle radar sight icons on or off. Going back to the main data menu, the next option down will take you to the National Radar Mosaic. This option is rather straightforward and shows you a stitched together national image for all of the radars in the National Weather Service network. There are several options for radar products, including quality controlled, base and composite reflectivity, raw reflectivity data, precipitation type, and echotops. The QC data will generally be preferred as this national mosaic will remove the influence of birds, bugs, and other non-meteorological returns. The base reflectivity will generally be preferred by most users as this data shows what the radar is seeing closest to the surface. The weather for a location option is very similar to just using the search bar option. The all hazardous conditions option will clear the radar from the map and make the underlying weather alerts more opaque and visible. We hope that you have found this full tour and basic tutorial to be helpful as you navigate the new National Weather Service radar website. Feel free to check out some of the other instructional videos that our colleagues have put together.